emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, and welcome to part four of our four of our build of the Meng Warship Builder U-Boat Type 7. A little chibi fun silly build for my very good friends and sponsors, emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. Now, if you remember in the last episode, I got all the deck painted up to recreate the effect that all the protective coating over the wood has been worn away in areas of high traffic. That's where we got up to. In this next episode, we need to start on the rest of the painting. Now, I'm going to hopefully, I don't know how much I'll get done in this episode, but I'm going to hopefully show you my method for doing pre-shading without actually doing pre-shading and without an airbrush. It's it's kind of post-shading and it's kind of, pre, it's, it's not really post or pre-shading because you're not really... I can't really explain it. I'll show it to you. It'll make sense. But it's how I like to get some depth and variation um, with models that I'm just brush painting. Remember, this is effectively an airbrush free build. I'm doing it for beginners. I have used some rattle cans and I have used an airbrush for the primer. But where I do use an airbrush, that's something that can be replicated with rattle cans. And only then will I use an airbrush. So I did it for primer. I may need to do it for like varnishes, but we'll see how that goes. But in this episode, I'm going to show you at the very least how I do my sort of airbrush free pre slash post ship i'll show you it makes more sense now as always i'm going to be using the same tools as i was in the last episode and i did explain what all those were so i'm not really going to go into depth here but suffice it to say i've got my collection of paints here i'm using three different brands i've got the uh, ammo by mig metal colors uh, i've got some golds and silvers and a bronze i have the vallejo game colors and the vallejo model colors and those are the three brands i'm using well two brands three different types that I'm using. The only difference between the game color and the model color really is the density of the pigment and the model colors are realistic sort of real world colors, German gray, Dunkel Gelb, olive green, that kind of thing. The game colors are more fantastical colors. They're designed to be analogs to say Citadel paints and other sort of war game, tabletop game paint brands and ranges. So they're more usually a bit brighter. They've got a denser pigment, but it doesn't really matter what paints you're using. I'm just showing you which ones I'm going to use. I'm also, of course, uh, using my wet palette here. Now, again, I won't go into detail about the wet palette because I did that in the last episode. But if you want to see what a wet palette is, how you can use it and how you can make one, click here. There's a little guide there to why you want one and that why you should make one. And I've got a selection of various different size brushes, which I'll go through as we go through the video. So without further ado, let me shut up and we'll crack on. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start painting the hole. The hole. To start with, we're going to do the light grey colour for the hole. This is basically everything above the waterline. Uh, so the upper part of the hole there. And it's kind of effectively where the seam line is between the two halves of the hole, the upper and lower half. We've got the railings, the tower, and lots of the bits and bobs on the deck, all the little bits. And also, of course, the front and back of the deck as well, which aren't covered in wood. So we need to get them painted. And for that, we're going to use the uh, 70992 model colour neutral grey, because the colour we want is neutral grey. Now I have some on my wet palette here. And the trick is, first and foremost, whenever you're painting anything, and I said this in the last episode, don't just use a small fine detail brush, even if there's lots of fine details to paint. Try and use the biggest brush you can applicable to that area. So I've got here, it's a Citadel base brush, but any kind of brush that sort of size is fine for this size of model. I'm gonna be painting along. If I used a fine detailing type brush, fine pointy ended brush, they don't hold a lot of paint and I'd be refilling the paint quite often and they also leave lots of brush marks the bigger your brush the less likely it is to leave brush marks on the finished model now again i'm using a wet palette so this paint has been put on the wet palette straight from the bottle just dropped on uh, and it's actually because the wet palette is moist not dripping wet it's moist enough to thin the paint a tiny 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 bit and just make it more flowy and less likely to dry in clumps and give you a rough surface i want the paint to go on smooth so it doesn't have brush marks and doesn't clog up all the little details. So get the paint on your brush. Don't just dip your paint in the paint and go for the model. You want to get paint on and work it into all the bristles because you don't want the brush dripping with paint. You just want paint on the brush. You want to make sure it's amongst all the bristles. You want to get yourself a good reservoir of paint so you're not having to refill all the time. And then all we're gonna do is start applying it. 
Now, ideally, I'm not going to be careful here. I know the bottom half of the hull is going to be a darker grey, but I don't care about that right now. That's fine. I'm just going to concentrate on getting coats of grey over the bit I need. And if it overgoes to the other bit, that's fine. Overgoes? That's not even a real word, Sam. If it goes on to the other bits, that's fine. Now, it looks streaky and horrible now. Again, don't care. Not a problem at all, because we're going to do more than one coat. The thing to keep in mind is that we are painting over a black primer coat uh, and that does make things a little more challenging because most paints are transparent to a certain degree so you will have to do more than one coat but there is a very good reason we're doing that and well, it'll become apparent when we're doing the, the sort of post shading later on we want to have some tonal variation on this ship we don't just want it to be boring flat grey because that is just boring we want it to have some variation and having the black in there will give us a natural effortless patchiness that looks a bit more convincing now i'm not worrying too much about going up the sides i'm making sure to brush this way or that way so the brush doesn't go onto the deck but when i get to the top here i can use the same brush or if i want to use a smaller brush you can do and i'm just going to very carefully then start brushing in the top here to make sure i don't get any on the actual deck itself i'm going to work my way around and get all these parts painted and this does include the parts on the deck that need to be bare metal so the hatches the strips and pipes and tubes the panels the fore and aft of the deck and also the parts around the gun emplacement so i'll get all this done and then we'll do the next step okay so that's the first coat of the neutral gray down and that looks like that looks like ass terrible in it it's horrible yeah well this is why it's uh, going to be more than one coat and this is what we're saying about painting over black primer most colors are transparent to a certain degree and one coat looks like that it's horrible but don't panic don't panic all we need to do is another coat now some paints need to do maybe three coats some paints just two this one i suspect will need just maybe two coats so again just go slowly keep the paint thinned a little bit with water from the wet palette and just slowly work your way along make sure this first coat of paint has dried first don't be brushing paint over a still wet paint and just slowly make your way along and get it coated if by the time you've done this second coat it still looks a bit patchy don't panic just go and add a third coat but that's why you want to make sure you're using either a wet palette so it can thin the paint down slightly or if you're using a dry palette add a tiny amount of water to the paint to thin it before you put it on the model because if you do need to do multiple coats you can build it up slowly and you'll still have a nice smooth finish and you'll maintain and retain all the little details and rivets and lines on the surface if you just go paint straight from the pot or if you just take it from the bottle and drip it on and then brush it straight over you might just get cloggy mess and brush marks so just take your time do note as well i painted the details on the deck i use a slightly smaller brush for those just to get into the details and these bits on here they look pretty terrible they're not exactly nice and neat and they've got blobby bits around the edge i kind of slipped every now and then that's fine because we'll do a wash on this later on and it will hide all those sins so don't worry if you're not a hundred percent super neat try and be as neat as you can but if you do make a little slip like that bit there you can see the little bleb of paint don't panic it'll all get hidden when it's weathered I'll go on and I'll get all this painted up. Next up, of course, is the dark part of the hull. And for that, we're going to use the magical German grey, uh, which is 70995. And for this, we're just going to do exactly the same. We're just going to slap it all over the bottom part of the hull, up to the seam line where the two parts of the hull match. Now, for this, remember my golden rule, like I said before, use the biggest brush you possibly can, A, to make painting quicker, and B, to get as smooth a finish as possible, because you're not spreading the paint around with a tiny little brush anyway. You're splabbing it around and smoothing it out with a wide, fat brush. So I'm going to use this big old boy here. When I get right to the edge, I'll use a smaller brush just to be neat and tidy. But if I do screw up and get any dark paint over the light paint, just touch it up afterwards so i've got some more of the german gray on my palette i'm going to get it on the brush tiniest amount of water and like i said before i'm not actually just dipping the brush in the paint and leaving it at that i'll show you i'm getting the paint on the brush and i'm mashing it into the bristles and i'm using this sort of slightly squished flattened thin patch here i'm not dipping in here and then putting it straight on the model because that's the same as taking it straight from the pot you want to get it flattened out on the palette where it can use the moisture and then work it to the bristles and you're getting the excess off you don't need a lot of paint on there then we're just going to go in and start painting it 
no real complicated questions to this. Now this is quite a light German grey colour, but again, the washes we do later on, they will sort all that out. Now when you're painting with these big brushes, do try and keep your brush strokes to as minimal as possible. And one thing I find handy, it's difficult here because these little ribbing marks, but when you get the paint on there, don't just put it on and move on, get the paint on and then spread it. Spread it flat. That's one of the reasons or one of the ways you get rid of all the brush marks is to spread the paint across the surface. So you're spreading it out like butter on toast. You're thinning it out, flattening it down. Now it's quite tricky because of all these little rib marks, but do that and you should end up with a nice flat and smooth gray color. Okay, so there we have the dark grey parts done now. It's just two coats of the German grey uh, to get that down. Now, it is a more opaque colour than the other one, so you can see here, it's kind of just giving me flat coverage, which is, is fine, I can work with that. Uh, and it only requires really a second coat to be a little bit thinner because the first coat was kind of very dense anyway, so it covered up most of the primer. So the second coat was just really to cover up any little patchy bits and smooth things out, get rid of any brush marks and just make it all nice and level. So that is now done. I say it's a bit, bit flat, but the next step should fix that. So what is the next step? Well, the next step is to do what I was talking about before, which is the sort of pre-shading slash post-shading kind of effect, but not using any kind of airbrush. We're going to just use dry brushing for this effect. And I've used this on many kits. It's a process I really love doing because it always looks nice and interesting. It's going to be challenging on here because the areas I've got to shade are quite small. The idea is this is a miniature of a real thing. Uh, on a real thing, this isn't just a flat color. There's depth, there's shading, there's concave and convex parts you just want to you want to create something now when you make a miniature of anything you kind of to get your eye to accept it you kind of have to exaggerate a lot of things you know when you're doing say if you're building an aircraft kit and you're putting pre-shading on there to put dark patches around the edge of panels you kind of don't really get that in real life but on a miniature version of something it makes sense to your eye it just gives it a, a depth that a flat model doesn't and that's what we're going to do but because this is a cartoon ship we're going to over exaggerate it so the first step is to darken things down. This is actually a bit too light, this colour. It's not quite a dark German grey that I want. So the first step is to darken it down. And we're going to do that with a dark wash or a black wash. Now, if you remember in the last episode, I used the Vallejo Game Colour Ink Black. And I used some of the Vallejo Glaze Medium as well to thin it, well, to dilute it. Let's use the correct term. I don't want to use the ink neat because if you use an ink, this is the stuff I'm going to use, it's the Vallejo Game Ink. If you use this neat, you'll just have a sad face because inks are incredibly dense with the pigment. The pigment is really, really bold and dense and you'll just turn this black. You want to reduce it down, but if you thin it, it'll behave differently. It won't have the same surface tension. It will make watermarks. It won't flow the same. It won't necessarily collect in the recesses the same way. It's going to be weird. What we need to do is not thin it like you would with water. You'd thin it. We need to dilute it. And to do that, we're going to use the Vallejo Glaze Medium. Uh, and the reason we're going to use that is because it's basically paint without colour. And by mixing those two together, it, th it makes the, the black ink less bold, more transparent, but it doesn't change the way it moves on the surface. It doesn't change the surface tension qualities. It doesn't change the way it behaves in recesses or in raised areas. It still behaves the same way. It's just there's less pigment in the same amount of clear, if you want to say carrier fluid. The carrier fluid is the glaze. You increase the amount of clear liquid, the amount of pigment, and it's just gonna behave the same way. So I'll go and mix them up and we'll get this done. Okay, so there's no deep dark magic to this now at all. I've mixed it up. I've got the same ratio that I had last time in the last episode, which was uh, four drops of the glaze medium to one drop of the ink. Not, I'm not literally using four drops and one drop. I'm using like those amounts. It might be four drops and one, or it might be eight and two. It's the same ratios, but not the same amounts. And I've got a goodly amount mixed up because I need to go over everything. All the grey hull areas, all the dark hull areas, and all these details on the deck. Now the bits on the deck, these raised parts here in the hatches. I'm going to use a small brush for these because I just need to go around the edges of them. I don't need to discolour them completely, but I need to go around the edges so that I can hide some of the shonky brush marks on there and just to give them some depth. But if I just go carelessly with it, I'll end up painting the deck black and I don't want that. So I'm going to use a fine brush for these, but for everything else, I've just got a big old brush for my shade. And all we're going to do is we're going to get the, uh, the wash, get some brush, and we're just going to get it on there. Now again, like I've said this many times before, when I do a wash like this, I don't think too much, I just get it on. We're going to do over all the, sh the, the hole. I keep this in the shell, I don't know why. But the trick here is you want to go over everything, 
but you do want to make sure it doesn't pull up. You want it to collect in the recesses like all these free-flowing vents, but you don't want to get like a big pool of it like there is there. You see there? I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this side of the U-boat, and I'm going to have it like this so gravity takes effect. I'm going to let this side dry, and then when this side has dried, I'm going to go and do the other side. I'm going to keep an eye on it because if it pulls anywhere, I need to just mop it up with the brush. And I'm going to do the other side. And when I've done the other side, then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll do all the stuff on the top. So that if I need to, say, have the, the, the boat tilted in a particular direction to let the liquid flow with gravity, I can do that. If I do it all at once, then everything just flows down. And that's maybe not what I want. So I'm going to go around and get all this done. But like I say, just make sure it doesn't pool anywhere. Don't worry if you get like patchy bits, darker bits or uneven texture. That's fine. I'm not looking to make everything nice and uniform right now. I'm just making everything dark. But if you get pooling up, just get the get the wash off your brush and just suck it up with the brush and just keep moving it like there. You see, I can suck that up and I can keep moving it around. But don't worry too much because we are going to go back over this to lighten it all up again at the end. Okay, so that's had about an hour to dry. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good. Now, I did do two coats of the wash on the dark German grey areas, just because it was still a bit similar to the lighter grey colour. It wasn't quite dark enough. So I've done an extra coat on here. Just one extra coat of the wash. Now, what's the next step? Well, we don't want it to stay looking like this, although it looks pretty grubby and dirty. We need to bring this back now. We need to bring the light colours back. Because the whole point of this is just really to add some shading and shadowing and variation. So to do that, we're going to do some dry brushing. So I'm going to get the German grey colour again, which is this is German guy. I'm going to dry brush it. So I've just got some on my palette over here. I'm going to get some on a piece of tissue. I'm going to get some off the palette. I only need a tiny amount here. Tiny amount, I'm going to get a little bit on the brush there. I'm going to get most of it off on the tissue. We're going to squish it in between all the bristles to get it worked in. But then we're going to get most of it off. Because what we want to do here is very subtle. What we want to do is start to dry brush this back, but we're not just going to do a traditional dry brush where you're trying to pick out the edges, you go backwards and forwards or up or down. We're going to do a specific dry brush. We're going to go in the center of panels and we're going to do lots of little circles. So basically what we're going to do is this. We're going to start to work the dry the paint. There's very little on the brush and we're going to start to do little circles in the center of panels and i hope you can see this is a very dark color so it's hard for you to see it i know and also my brush is in the way which doesn't help but we're going to do lots of little circles pushing gently not massively but we're going to try and avoid the center of the panels and just go in the middle because what we want is the edges around the sort of panel lines the seams and the joints to look like they're a little bit darker so i need some more paint because that's not going to last long it's going to take us a while to get this paint on there some more paint here so i'm going to get that off on the tissue again just, you're going to have to reload the brush quite often and you want to use a small brush small dry brush any kind of chisel i mean any brush will do but ideally you want a sort of chisel edged or straight end brush like that and you want to just work these little circles little is probably a bit too much paint on there if you get too much just take it off in your hand let's try a flatter bigger piece we might see it better Let's try it on, uh, on this bit here. Just focus on the middle. Very gentle. I'm not putting on any pressure at all. The reason I'm going in little circles is if you do the flicky flicky dry brushing, that just picks out edges, which is fine if you just want to pick out edges. But if you want to do any kind of blending or fading or shading like this, little circles just means you're just depositing the paint on there. But by doing little circle patterns, you're blending it all together. You're avoiding any obvious brush marks and straight edges. And I found that when I used to colour things with pencil crayons. I used to do art years and years ago. I used to colour things with pencil crayons. I'd do the ink drawing and then pencil crayons to colour it in. And if you just colour with a pencil crayon like that, you get pencil marks, you get lines. If you do it with little circles, they overlap each other eventually to the point where you don't see the circles anymore. You just see the colour. So I need to go around and do all this on the lower hole now. Uh, so and that's going to take me a while so for you it'll she it'll be but a moment for me probably about an hour all right so that's the german gray dry brush and hopefully you can see it's a bit dark i know the picture's not great but uh, hopefully you can see now instead of just looking dark it looks a bit varied 
same on the other side we've done the other side as well it's just got a bit more depth and life to it now you've got some shadowing around the the raised areas and the panel lines and the joints and things like that it just gives it a bit of variation now there is a lot of weathering to go on this this isn't weathering by the way we're not doing weathering yet this is still just getting the base colors down so hopefully you can see that looks a bit more interesting now uh, next i need to do exactly the same with the upper hull with the light neutral gray area so i'm going to get some of the uh, original paint which was the neutral gray 70992 and we'll do exactly the same so let me get some on the brush now it's important to note here when i'm getting paint uh on the brush i'm using a i'm not that's off camera but i'm not using my wet palette when i'm doing dry brushing i just use a bit of card or a tile or a piece of plastic or plastic lid or something i don't use my wet palette because you don't need the paint to be thin at this point you want the paint to be dry as possible so stodgy paint is great at this point because we're taking most of it off so yeah don't use your normal wet palette if you're using one just use a piece of card or similar so we're going to do exactly the same here we're going to take our dry brush and we're just going to work in small circular patterns just in the center of panels just to slowly build up i'm putting on almost no pressure whatsoever so we'll do exactly the same and the same applies to the tower uh, and to the the fore and after decks there and if possible uh, the little detail parts now i may have to use a much smaller brush on the deck just to be able to get the brush in there so i'll probably swap around for like a very small brush or something like that but yeah we'll go around and get all this done okay so that's done and hopefully you can see now it's starting to look a bit more alive and lively now like i said before this is not in any way weathering really although i suppose you could say this was weathered a little bit you've weathered the protective coating off the wood and shown the wood underneath but we're just splitting hairs there this is not yet any kind of weathering we're still just doing the base color if we were doing this with airbrushes this would be the point at which we are basically doing the pre-shading we lay down some dark lines and stripes where we want the shadow to be we then very lightly mist over the colours over the top and keep a little bit of transparency so the shadow lines are still barely visible. We're not doing an airbrush job, so we have to do that in reverse. We're actually putting the darkness in first and then bringing the light areas back to get a similar effect. It's just an artificial way of giving some sort of structure and shape. So what is next? Well, next we need to do exactly the same again with the German grey and the neutral grey, but we need to add a little bit of white to them, just a tiny amount to get an even lighter shade and just do one more pass but just picking out the light areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on, say, the raised areas here and the tops of panels, and we're going to get a bit of extra depth. So let me just get some on the brush. So it's going to be exactly the same as before. We've got the German grey here with a little tiny touch, like not even half a brushful, maybe a brushful at best, of white added, just normal white paint. The bone white is the Vallejo one. And we're just going to do exactly the same again. But we're going to be a little more careful now. We're going to stick it right in the middle, but not as big an area it's going to be a really small area still the little circles but we're going to try and minimize the area because we want to make basically a highlight we don't want to do everything we want to get a little highlight patch in some of the centers of the panels just so it's not just dark and light but you've got dark light and then a slightly lighter color again so we're going to just build this up slowly once I've done this, of course, I'm going to do exactly the same again on the neutral grey areas as I did before. And that is again the same neutral grey colour with a tiny sort of almost half, say half brushful of white added. Again, just to get an extra highlight. I won't show that because it's the same process as this, but it's basically the same. And just focusing on the centre of panels and even more of a, more of a small, wow, well, get my words out, even more of a smaller area. Now you can see how I'm feathering it a bit when I'm getting to the edges here. I just want to blend it a little bit so i am doing little sort of swipey movements just very subtle i've got almost nothing left on the brush now very subtle just to blend in those little dark patches a little bit more but i'm just going to work my way around like i say when i've done this bit i'll do the neutral gray with a little bit of white added as well okay so with that done yes we're looking much more interesting now now remember like i said i'm not going for super super realism kind of cartoony and exaggerated but that's exactly the point now we are going to be doing stuff later on in the weathering part of this build where this might all sort of come together a little bit better and be less harsh bright and dark but we'll find out how it goes note as well i got some paint on the base and then when i was painting and holding this i managed to get lots of little splobs of paint all over the u-boat <laughs> yeah i had to go and tidy those up Ooh, so just be careful 
uh, but we're going to repaint the base so it doesn't really matter so what's next well there's not a lot left to do really in terms of getting some base colors on here really we just have some little details to pick out now there are some metallic parts like the screws and the prop shafts here we've got the gun on the back of the tower and we've got the deck gun as well uh, where they need to be painted metallic colors now we're not necessarily going to do those right now because once we've got the base colours down and we've got some weathering on there, we're going to have to matte varnish it. And there's no point me doing all the painting and getting all the metallics looking nice and shiny and then matte varnishing them. We're going to have to do that anyway. So we might leave those till later once all the weathering's done, especially for the props and the prop shaft, or the screw and the prop shaft, because they need to look kind of shiny. So that's come on nicely. Anyway, let's do the next bits. The next bit we need to do is paint these little life belts things here. Uh, just little tiny details. Now what I'm going to use for that is the Gory Red. Vallejo Gory Red, uh, game colour. Gory Red. It is 72011. It's a kind of dark red colour. So I've got a little bit on my palette. I've just put my finger in the palette. Look. Oh, spoon. You spoon, Fox. Hang on a minute. Let me get all that paint off my finger. Oh. When you're painting, just, just be careful when you're painting that you don't get paint on your fingers and then transfer it to the model because that's... I've got... See, I've got some on there now. Look. Oh. Hang on a minute technical difficulties yes always be careful when you're painting if you get paint on your finger you don't always notice it because that's made a mess look mess mess you don't always notice it so keep your beady eyes open i want to get all the tissue out now oh. right i need more kitchen roll i'm about to run out so always keep your beady eyes open like i did there where i got some paint on the base and I got up my finger and transferred little splodges of it onto the hole. I was easily able to cover them up with a bit more dry brushing. It wasn't a problem, but just be careful. Now let's crack on. So I'm going to use a super, super tiny, tiny brush. This is a Winsor & Newton Series 7 a Triple Aught brush. It's like the size of a rice or maybe the size of a salt. I don't know. Uh, and for this, I want the paint a little thinner than normal. So I have some paint on the palette here. I'm going to get a little bit of water. Now these paints, these game colour paints, they are a little bit thinner than some paints you might be used to. So I, I didn't really say this before, but you can water them down a bit now because I'm doing tiny details and I want some good control. I don't want it to be too thick. So I'm taking, I know it's probably out of focus by the way, because the focus is locked on the U-boat, so apologies. So I've got a nice point on my brush. No, I haven't. <laughs> totally haven't got a nice point. When you get the paint on your brush, just twist the brush in your palette oops and then drag it like that by accident twist the brush a little bit and that'll help you get a nice point because you want a nice point for this kind of thing and we're just going to slowly get the color on there now like with any other painting don't just worry about getting it all on there at once if you need to do more than one coat it's not the end of the world if it's a bit patchy the first coat so let's get this done With those painted red, we just need to go over it with a little bit of black ink. Again, thin with the medium, the glaze medium. And this is just to give some shading to the life preserver. Little bit, not too much. I'm not using a big brush for this. Just enough to collect around the edges, and give a bit of shade, and a bit of definition where the little clamps are that hold it onto the tower. Then once that's dried, I'm going to go over with a very thin, almost glaze of the same red as before, but with a bit of yellow added to it. Just any old yellow will do. It just brightens it without making it too pastel coloured. All I'm doing is I'm doing this really on the very top edge of the ring, just to give it a little bit of a highlight and bring it back from the darkness. You can see there it looks a bit more lively as I hit the camera, my apologies. And same on the other side. And with that, we're nearly done. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will be noticing that there's a black stripe here and a black bit here. You didn't see me paint that. Yeah, no, you didn't see me paint that because I press record, did the five or ten minutes of work, press record again to stop it, and then it started recording. Because the first time I pressed record, it didn't take. So I did ten minutes of work, talking away to myself quite happily, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it didn't record, so oops, sorry. Basically, I just painted the, the, uh, the protection strip behind the ladder and that bit on the front of the tower there. And for that, I just used the Vallejo Game Color Heavy Charcoal 72155. I don't know what the purpose of the black bit there was, but on the uh, tower here, the black paint behind the ladder that you go up and down the tower on, 
that was designed just to keep it looking neat and tidy because you'd often get scuff marks from the boots and scrapes and you know dirt and stuff going up and down the ladder they'd scuff the boots against the, the tower and it looked a bit dirty so they decided to paint that black strip just to make it look nice and neat and tidy about it's kind of weird really given the fact that the rest of the u-boat probably looked like a dog's backside by the time it got into into harbour yet yeah, they wanted to keep the bit behind the ladder nice and neat and tidy bless them it's just that paint thinned it a little bit and applied it with my triple aught windsor and newton series 7 brush now it looks a reasonably straight it's not perfect it looks reasonably straight the one thing a lot of video tutorials won't tell you is that when you're trying to do freehand markings and paint straight lines and things like that a lot of the times you'll paint the details blah blah you paint some markings or lines and then you have to go back with the color behind them and tidy up and make the edges nice and neat a lot of people don't tell you that they just say now we're going to paint a freehand marking and then the next thing you see is the freehand marking that's dishonest i i will always tell you in this case i painted the straight line it was fiddly to get to it wasn't quite parallel there was a bit sort of triangle shaped it was a bit wider at the bottom so i went back in with the neutral gray color and just tidied up the straight edges and then touched in the rungs of the ladder so don't worry if you're trying to do freehand markings or straight lines and they're not coming out very neat and tidy there's often a back and forth between the foreground and the background color you have to do that everybody does that even hardcore pros do that yeah if they don't tell you that then they're just they're just being dishonest so really there's only one thing left to do in this episode in terms of the base colours and that is something I just said about five minutes ago I wasn't going to do. I'm going to paint the weapons, the gun on the back of the deck there and the actual deck gun itself. Now I've painted the fairing and the main part of the deck gun but I've not painted the actual barrel. And all we're going to do for this I'm going to use uh, the Chainmail Silver 72053 to start with and we're just going to paint these so it's nothing too complicated that I need to explain to you at all in any great detail. Now I'll just get some paint on my brush fairly obvious really we're just going to first of all give these weapons an all over silver paint job so this deck gun i'm not doing the little the, the, the sort of stand a bit if you see underneath it the stand the bit that sticks out of the deck that's still painted in the same neutral gray that's because that was hull colored but the actual gun itself that's going to be the silver color to start with so we'll just get that on Okay, so that's the silver done, so you can see it's nice and shiny. I've done the same on the deck gun as well, you can see there. Uh, it's just the barrel that I've done on the deck gun. It's not the actual fairing around it or the body work, just the barrel itself. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to make these look less like your mum's favourite silverware uh, and more like actual weapons. We're going to use the same wash technique that we've used before, the, the black ink, and it's going to be a four to one ratio, four drops of the uh, glaze medium to one drop of the black ink. You can put more if you want, it just makes it a thinner colour. We want this to look like gunmetal. So we're going to use two or maybe even three coats of the black wash uh, just to gather in the recesses and darken it all up. For the deck gun, I'm going to use well they see these weren't gun metal these were just metal and often they were painted deck color, the same color as the you know everything else they were painted all gray or something like that now obviously it's kind of a silly fun build and on the box art it does show this as a metal color so we're not going to make it gun metal we'll just make it look like steel or something like that. It's a bare steel bare worn steel so maybe one maybe two coats but not as many coats as the machine gun on the back gets that gets to look like blue steel this one just look like steel and i'll show you how to do the blue in a minute so I'll get some of my wash and we'll get that on there. So again, not being careful like we've done before, not being careful at all, just getting it on. I'm just restricting it to the parts I've painted silver. So on this, it's just the machine gun itself. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Get that on. As before, be generous with it, but just make sure it's not pooling up anywhere. Uh, it will, if you let it pool up, it does go dark, which is fine, which is what we want. But you also get these bulbs of liquid and if it does pull up anywhere you get this it can with any kind of wash it can dry as a raised bulb of liquid and you get a sort of a shape you don't want that you want to discolor it not actually just change the shape of it but plus you don't want to obscure any details either so you want to keep it relatively thin so that's one coat on there uh, and i'll do one coat on the deck gun a bit more generous on this one this might only need one coat we'll see a lot of the, the tricks I use when I'm brush painting, one seemingly overused but absolutely invaluable technique when you're doing washes like this, is to, is to think in reverse. You want to make things go dark before you then bring them back to the light. So my, my technique is always bring it back to the light. I'm going to put a load in there to be the end of the barrel. 
Uh, well, maybe I'll do a couple of those. You always want to bring things back to the light. So I'm going to put this in my little, I'm going to stand this up in my little stick holder. It's over there off to the side so it can dry in the correct position. So I'll keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't pull. But yes, you always want to go from dark to light. You want to get the base colours down, darken them down with washes or shades or however you want to explain them and then bring them back and that way you get a nice shadowing effect so i'll let that dry i'll come back when i've done all the shade uh, the shading it's my warhammer words coming out when i've put the wash on these uh, and i'll show you what they're like and i'll probably do us for this episode so i'll let this dry i'll do another coat we'll be back in a minute okay so it's actually four coats of the wash on the gun at the back of the tower here to get that particular effect it's a nice metallic looking color but it's not got that blue steel look so what i've done I've got here on a piece of card uh, some of the glaze medium, four drops, four blobs of it. And then I've got some Ammo by Mig Crystal Light Blue. I said I'd be using colours that I didn't actually say at the start of the series. Uh, and this is to make effectively a glaze, which is what we've made. But we want to get a blue tint to this. So it's a bit of a glaze, it's a bit of a tint. And all we're going to do is going to take some of that. Ooh, I'm going to knock the camera, obviously. And then we're just going to brush that over. Now it may look a bit weird at first, but it won't look so bright once it's dried. Basically what we've done is make effectively a glaze, but because the crystal blue is a transparent colour and the medium is just basically paint without pigment, we've taken the transparent blue colour, we've diluted it, not thinned it. Remember what we said in the other episode, it's not thinning, it's diluting. So it still behaves exactly the same way, it's just less opaque, it's more transparent. So I'm going to give that a second to dry. Okay, so that's now dried, it's time for a second coat. A little uh, behind the scenes secret for you, what you didn't see there was me drying it with a hairdryer. <laughs> yeah, to speed things up. If you, if you want to speed things up, you can dry acrylic paints, water-based acrylic paints with a hairdryer. Just be careful, keep the hairdryer moving. You don't want to keep it one place too long and be careful that you don't obviously melt the plastic on the kit. Some plastics are very susceptible to heat. Most will be fine. If it's a resin kit, I wouldn't recommend it because resin obviously can change shape when it's heated. So can plastic, plastic if you heat it too much. So just keep things moving. But yes, as I was saying, um, because the paint is clear and the glaze is clear and you're just di you're diluting it, not thinning it, it still behaves exactly the same it just is more transparent. Whenever you add glaze medium to a paint, you're making it more transparent without changing the way it behaves. So if ever you want to change the tint of something, one way is to make your own effectively glaze or tint by taking glaze medium of some kind. Lots of different brands have their own glaze medium uh, and mixing in a little, either a little tiny amount of color just to tint it or adding in a clear color, a small amount of clear color and that makes you glaze and that's how you get different colours and I don't know if you'll see it might not come out on camera but I have two coats of that now it is looking more like blued steel not 100% like blued steel but it's just a bit closer to rather than just looking like dark dirty steel so I think that's going to do so I'm going to let that dry and then I think pretty much for this episode we're going to be done and with that dried, we are done for this episode. That's all the real base painting I need to do for now. And I haven't painted the periscopes, you can see there, they're still black primer. Uh, and I haven't done the base yet, but that's because we'll do those towards the end. There's a very specific plan with the periscopes that I may or may not do. And it kind of means me not to fully paint them because I don't want to mess up a paint job with the plan that I have. But hopefully now you can see the difference between the gun at the back and the deck gun. This is a more sort of dark steel looking effect and that is more of a blue steel looking effect. Now obviously they're going to get covered in matte varnish before the project's finished. That's fine because then they won't look like metal anymore but that's fine. Like I said it's all about making things dark and then bringing them back to the light side. It's like Star Wars isn't it? Bringing them back to the light side and that will be done towards the end of the project if not at the very end. So they will become more like metal once we're done. So don't worry too much about those getting covered in matte varnish. But that's going to do for this episode thank you so much for watching i hope you're enjoying it so far and if you're building along i hope you're having fun don't forget of course if you'd like to pick up this kit or any of the things that i've used in this kit apart from my wet palette that i made myself do pop along to my very good friends and sponsors over at emodels emodels.co.uk your one-stop shop for all your model making needs pretty much anything you need they've got it in stock uh, if there is something there specific that you're looking for and you can't find it 
give them a shout. Either use the contact form on the website or drop them an email or give them a phone call. It's usually either because maybe it's just out of stock and they can let you know when it'll be back in. Or maybe it's something that they don't currently stock. But if you're asking for it, they can probably get it from one of their distributors. So if you can't find something, there's either something else on there that's just as good or give them a shout. I'm sure they'll be able to help you out. They're really, really cool guys. So go and check them out. Anyway, like I said, that's going to do us. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Stay tuned for the next one when we'll start the weathering process. Things like chipping. We might do some filters. We'll do some streaking. Things like that to start to make this look lived in. All this stuff we've done so far is not weathering. This is all base colours. Next is the filthy fine. Yes. So stay tuned. Anyway, until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. You there. You there looking at this with all your eye holes. Go be awesome. Until next time, adios amoebas. Oh, my God.